Look at this. Yes, those rear wheels are steering, and no, they're not broken. It might look like it's drifted into a curb at high speed, or it's been aligned using a bendy ruler, but it's actually intended to make the car more maneuverable and safer at higher speeds. Executive cars like the S-Class have always been huge in length. The current generation is no different, with the shortest version coming in at just over 5 meters, and all of that length tends to make a car difficult to maneuver in a tight spot. To solve that, Mercedes has fitted its big executive barge with steering angles so ridiculous it will make a drift car look silly. So how does it work? It's operated using an electric motor which drives a spindle on the rear axle. The motor will have sensors that feed it information on what the front wheels are doing so that the car can figure out what it needs to do with the rears. It works in a couple of different ways depending on what situation the car is in. It can steer in the same direction as the front wheels or it can counter steer. Steering in the same direction aids stability at higher speeds. For example, when making adjustments on a motorway, it will help the car almost crab if you need to quickly avoid a car. It sounds quite scary, but the S-Class is a clever thing, and I imagine they've tested it quite a bit. I mean, this is a car that literally jumps up when it detects a side impact. Steering in the opposite direction will help with maneuverability at lower speeds. The system in the S-Class has two different versions, 4.5 degrees and a crazy 10 degrees. Because of the extreme angle, the wheels and tyres have to be limited in diameter and width to 255, 40, 20 in order to allow for the additional movement. It's that opposite steering angle that makes such a huge difference to the turning circle. The four-wheel drive, long wheelbase S-Class has a turning circle of 12.8 meters. That 10 degrees of rear wheel steering brings that number down to 10.9. An almost two meter improvement is seriously impressive and makes it about the same as an A-class hatchback. Listen to this, the electric Mercedes EQS, which is basically the electric S-Class, and it also has rear wheel steering. However, if you want to activate the full 10 degrees, you have to pay a yearly subscription of $575. The worst part of that is that it's just a software update, so all of the hardware is already there. Anyway, let's get back into it. Despite being amazing long distance mile munchers, a lot of S-Classes are used in towns and cities by chauffeurs. So I'm sure this tech will be worth its weight in gold when driving around somewhere like London. Just look at this footage. It makes squeezing a big car into a relatively small space look so easy. It is impressive tech, but it's not exactly new. Rear wheel steering has been around in some form or another for years now. They're not exactly road cars, in fact, they're barely cars at all, but monster trucks have used four wheel steering for years in order to make them more maneuverable in arenas. They're usually operated manually so the driver can choose when to use the rear wheel steering and which way to make it steer. Mitsubishi and Honda tried it with the 3000 GT and the Prelude in the late 80s and early 90s to good effect, but it never really seemed to catch on. Rear wheel steering seemed to be one of those technologies in the automotive world that would just never catch on, but in the last five to 10 years, it's had something of a resurgence. Modern cars have gotten bigger, heavier, and faster, and manufacturers like Porsche, Bentley, and Renault have used rear wheel steering to make their cars more agile. The new 911 GT3, the Megane RS, the Continental GT, the Lamborghini Aventador, and even the Ferrari 812 all use some form of rear wheel steering. Nissan used its high cast system in performance cars like the R32, the R33, and the R34 GTR, as well as the 300Z, but the angle was nowhere near as extreme as what you'd find in the S-Class, with just one degree at low speed and 0.3 degrees at high speed. The system started out hydraulically operated and eventually evolved into an electronic one. Like the S-Class, it used signals from the front wheels in order to figure out what was best to do with the rears. Unfortunately, the system wasn't that reliable and would leave owners with an annoying light on the dash when it stopped working. That meant a lot of owners opted to have their car fitted with a lockout kit, which made the rear steering angle fixed. So what about the reliability? Well, it's a bit scary. Imagine it failed at high speed or jammed. That old Nissan system only had a maximum angle of one degree. You could probably be out by one degree with just bad alignment. 
but surely with 10 degrees it gets a lot more complicated. As far as we can tell there hasn't been any major problems with the systems but what if it were to fail or just not work how it's supposed to? With that amount of rear steering it could definitely cause you problems when you're least expecting it. It's also worth thinking about longevity. Big cars like the S-Class often need suspension parts replaced when they start getting old. So will all of that extra tech make everything more expensive? But I think that with how popular rear wheel steering now is, they're only going to get more and more reliable. Manufacturers have had 30 years of trial and error to get it right. And you'd imagine they don't want their customers spiraling out of control on the motorway because their car suddenly turns into a forklift. Thank you very much for watching this video. Check out these other videos that I think you'll love. And don't forget to subscribe to the Driven Media channel. Cheers, and I'll see you next time.